Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100-pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. I don't have anything to be thankful for. I don't have anything where I give thanks for. I don't have nothing. I remember telling my students one time, actually it was a writing exercise, and I said, you know, we have Thanksgiving coming up. Let's do three paragraphs. You know how the format goes with the opening topic statement, supporting points, make sure you have the resolution and then the conclusion. And all you have to do is something you're thankful for. It could be your family, your friends, your pets. It could be situations happening right now. It could be friendships out of school. It could be something in school. It could be one of your teachers. Don't use me. Use somebody else. And anything at all that you're thankful for, physically, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally. And this one kid just sat there, his arms folded, pencil on the paper. Everybody else was writing furiously, and some were like, oh, this is good, I'm getting in the Thanksgiving mood. And others were like, wow, I forgot to thank him or her for this. And I come around to this kid, I'll say his name was Mike, it wasn't. And I said, Mike, do you have anything to be thankful for? Nope. Do you have a pet? Nope. Parents? Well, they're split. Well, aren't you still thankful? Nope. Okay, what about this beautiful day? Nope. What are you going to do on Thanksgiving? Nothing. You're not going to do anything. I'm going to get high. Okay, well, that wouldn't be a good topic, I don't think. And he said, yeah, that's what I'll write about, how I'm thankful for weed. I said, okay, let's think of something else. I said, I'll give you a few minutes, and then I'm going to come back, but not weed. So I came back, and he had written a few lines. I can't remember what the topic sentence was, but I said, so what have you decided to write about? And he said, "Um, sense of humor. I said, good, that is great. I said, a sense of humor is something we can really be thankful for because some people don't have one. And he said, well, you do. And it reminded me that I laugh a lot when I'm in your class. I said, oh, Mike, well, good. Write about what you have a sense of humor about, how you're going to do it. Write your topic sentence. And he said, I got it. Don't worry. (laughs) And I walked away chuckling and I patted him on the shoulder. That was the only thing I had to do to get Mike started on being thankful for something. And he talked about a friend who had a great sense of humor. And he talked about his dad, who used to tease him and pick on him as a little boy and who he'd really like to see. And, you know, you can gain a whole lot of information, insight, and, of course, even inspiration from reading what your students write. Now, you may not be a teacher, but maybe you could do this with your own kids, your grandchildren, maybe your spouse. What are you thankful for? Some families, before they even begin their Thanksgiving dinner, go around the table and something I'm thankful for. And I remember a grandmother saying, I'm thankful that we're going to hurry this up so the food doesn't get cold. Anyway, some people right now are not looking forward to Thanksgiving. We were testing around the area to see if there are places that are giving out free food to the homeless, and they do the day before, but nobody this year that I could find in our little city here is doing hot meals on Thanksgiving. I know a lot of different places do, and we have up until this year. Even during COVID, they were doing that and putting them, you know, on a far end where people could just go by and pick them up in a box and everybody was wearing gloves and masks. And so anyway, our friend has invited us over for Thanksgiving again, as we always do when we're not home at my mom's and other family members for Thanksgiving. But there is one thing at Thanksgiving when people say, I don't have anything to be thankful for. 
Oh, my friend, there is a list so long of things that we could and should be thankful for. Even just in going through a few of the scriptures that we could share, it's even in Leviticus, back in the Old Testament, it says, when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. Don't say it just because you have to or because you think you should or because somebody else is listening. Make sure that it is sincere. And let me promise you this. First Chronicles 16, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Mercy is like if you throw yourself at the court of mercy, I know what I deserve, but please have mercy on me and don't give me that. Don't give me that sentence. Don't give me that burden. Don't whatever it is. And that mercy, we can thank God for his endless mercy, endless mercy. Now, how do we thank him? Well, Psalm pretty well spells it out in Psalm 6930. I will praise the name of God with a song and magnify him with thanksgiving. How do you magnify God? Well, it's not, ag- it's not the actual God. God himself is as big as he is, and he's huge, and we can't even understand or see or even conceive. Mind has not thought and eye has not seen. But we do know that in our own minds, God gets bigger and bigger when we decrease. It says we must decrease. He must increase. And how does he increase in our hearts, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our actions? By giving him full reign of all that he is and all that we're not. And I thank God that he will not only take those reins in my life, but do in and through me whatever needs to be done. And as Colossians 4 says, I will continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Vigilant prayer includes thanksgiving. And of course, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, what is one of my favorites? In everything, give thanks For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. To give thanks in the middle of a storm, to give thanks in the middle of the doctor giving that diagnosis, to give thanks in the middle of getting old and achy and pains and things we have to deal with that we didn't when we were younger. God says, give thanks. There is something about your heart, your mind, your spirit, your soul, when you give thanks Oh, God, thank you. And you don't even have to thank him for anything. Just say, God, I thank you because I have air to breathe. I have water to drink. I have a hot bath I can take, unlike many around the world. I give thanks that you can use me in mission work by giving or going, in doing tasks and being called to different places. Thank you, God that you allow me to be your hands and your feet. Thank you, God, for my friends, my family, the good parts of my health that I do have. And I even thank you that you're sustaining me and helping me in the areas where my health is not that good. This Thanksgiving, my friend, you can make a list or you can just spontaneously pray and start thanking God for all the things. I'm looking out over the beautiful water here on the lake where we live. And when my husband and I walked out today to check on the pool, which we had to change some chemicals with, the water was clear in the pool and we looked out and it was beautiful hanging moss over the lake. It's a bright, sunny day. It's going to be 75 here today. And as we looked out, we said, God, we thank you for this beautiful scenery you have given us here as we have retired. Standing by the pool, God, you didn't have to give us a swimming pool. You didn't have to allow us to find this house on the lake for retirement. You didn't have to give us the boat and the boat dock, but God, you did. And we are ever thankful. Help me, God, if I ever start taking anything for granted. And then we started praying for the people that we had just heard on the news getting six feet 
of snow and not even being able to get out, maybe not even being able to share Thanksgiving this year. I don't know what would happen if you're all snowed in and people wanting to go to grandma's or aunts and uncles or your family, your friends, church, and you can't get out. God, we pray for those. We pray for those who are hurting that need healing. We pray for all of those who don't feel thankful that just right now you would give them a thankful heart and let them see that you are God and you are worthy of all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. No matter where you are, alone or in a crowd of hundreds, this Thanksgiving, remember who we're giving thanks to and what you alone can give thanks for in Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for staying with me. I'm Dr. Peppers, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.